Did you know that 41 out of every 100,000 individuals in Canada are affected by idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, also known as IPF? If you've never heard of IPF, it is a chronic lung disease that is characterized by tissue scarring in the lungs. And when the lungs become damaged, it becomes difficult for the lungs to function effectively. This can cause symptoms such as difficulty breathing, for example. The main symptoms of IPF include shortness of breath, a dry hacking cough, and fast shallow breathing. Around 80% of people with IPF show coughing as a symptom, so we decided to further investigate coughing and its potential consequences. Stephen Binch and Tom Carruthers from the Hamilton IPF Support Group have kindly allowed us to interview them about how IPF and coughing have affected their daily lives. As an individual with IPF, do you face any stigma around your condition? What I have found is that most people, particularly since I wear the uh, concentrator, so it's obvious I have an issue, most people are extremely helpful and friendly. The only time I had a, if you will, a stigma was when I didn't have the oxygen and I'd be going out and I started coughing and you'd have everybody looking at you like, why are you out here when you're coughing? I think when you've got a hidden illness uh, and people react differently, perhaps. The stigma I would face is that it's a terrible weight that you have to carry pretty well all the time. In a sense, it controls your life. Unless you have the disease and you have the cough, you don't really understand what people go through. It's really hard to relate this to somebody. It's not like you have a cold or the flu. What are some of the symptoms that you experience every day? I have to concentrate on my breathing. And if I start concentrating on what I'm saying, I'm not breathing. So therefore, I'm not getting enough oxygen in to continue the conversation. Coughing immensely, frequently, getting breathless and getting tired more than I ever used to. How much do you cough daily? I pretty well cough morning to night. It's tiring, it's sore, my chest gets sore, my ribs are sore, my muscles are sore, my neck is sore. There's some cords um, that run up and down the side of my neck that I pretty well have to put some kind of a muscle relaxant on them at night. I learned that these muscles actually are connected with your coughing and your lungs. So that's why I've uh, kind of worn them out. If you ask my wife, it would be constantly, but it's somewhere between constantly and three times an hour. And if I'm really exerting myself, that's when I will start coughing definitely. How long would you say a coughing fit lasts for? I'm hoping that it's only going to last maybe 10, 15 seconds and I can somehow kind of control it. If it gets out of hand and it runs longer, like to 20 seconds or, or 30 seconds, I cough so bad that maybe I will, uh, I could vomit, I could uh, really get short of breath. So normally they're, they're shorter. They're, you know, five, five to eight seconds. What are some ways you are currently controlling your cough? I find hot water will soothe my throat and sometimes that helps me with the cough. If I just kind of relax myself more and take some deep breaths. That helps me a little bit. Sometimes a lozenge would help because it kind of gets my mind off the actual um, act maybe of coughing. So it gives me that partial break. When I'm actually coughing, the only way that I can control it is I put a lozenge and, uh, and use that. I've used uh, what they call NAC, which is N-acetyl-L-cysteine. So I still take that because it seems to help. I also take a prescription drug called gabapentin, and it's supposed to help control uh, the cough in the, it, if you will, interferes or helps block the nerves that go from your lung to your brain that tells you to cough. So I've been taking that. That's a prescription one. And uh, I drink pineapple juice because there's a, uh, an active in that, that that has been shown to help coughs. What are some problems you face in your daily life, including your social life, personal life, and exercise? Problems I face are, uh, one, being able to carry on a conversation on, on the telephone, for example, without starting to cough. It's very irritating to everybody. And I just can't do the physical stuff I used to be able to do. And that's frustrating to me. I taught chairperson of a seniors advocacy group. And what is interesting is I could go to those meetings, chair them, lead them for the whole time, which is about two hours, which is a speaker in there that I'm not speaking, not cough. And then as soon as the meeting was over and I got in my car, I'd be coughing my head off. How does the Hamilton IPF support group help you? I started going to that a year and a bit ago, I think it was. I found one thing is that guess what? There's a whole bunch of people that are the same as me if you will, have the same concerns. And when you get a whole bunch of people with the same concerns, you really can't complain that much because guess what? The person next to you has got the same complaint. 
So you learn to work together and you learn to sort of to support each other. It just makes you feel good to be part of it and not alone. I don't have to explain myself to anyone. If I stopped you on the street and I'm trying to explain what IPF is, and I could stand there for half an hour trying to explain all the different stages and how it works, there's a good chance you're still not gonna know what I'm talking about. When you walk in to a support group meeting and you can say to someone, I have IPF, and they say, so do I. Well, six words covered everything. You both know exactly what you're going through and um, it's really comforting. It's nice when somebody goes into the meeting and they're new. Well, when you've just been diagnosed and heard the short term that normally uh, you're told you have three to five years to live, and then you hear the names and how long they've had it as they go around the room, it's reassuring to see that some people have had this eight, nine, ten years. So why uh, would you be on your own uh, trying to do all this on your own when you can just show up, have a coffee, have a laugh, join a bunch of friends. It really is a support group. Special thanks to Stephen and Tom for sharing with us what it's like to live with IPF. Click on the link in the description box to watch part two, where a cough specialist from McMaster University will explain why IPF patients experience coughing and possible treatments. If you're looking for more resources, check out the description box for more information about support groups such as the Hamilton IPF Support Group.